YouTube land. The name of this week's video is Do You Need a Heart Transplant? Of course, with a title like that, I will be discussing the heart and issues of the heart. Fasten your seatbelts, it may be a bumpy ride. This will be a two parter, so I'll probably do part two next week. Hopefully, it works out. The heart is the core of our beings. Whatever is in your heart will manifest itself in your life, whether good or bad, good or evil. There's no denying that fact. First scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 1 through 16. At that time, Yahuwah said to me, How for hew for yourself two tablets of stone like the first? So this was after Exodus 20. And come up to me on the mountain. You shall make for yourself an ark of wood. Then I write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke, and you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood, hewed two tablets of stone like the first, and went up to the mountain, with the two tablets in my hand. And he wrote on the tablets, according to the first writing, the ten words, which Yahuwah had spoken to you in the mountain from the midst of the fire the day of the assembly. Then Yahuwah gave them to me. And I turned and came back from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which I had made. And they are there as Yahuwah commanded me. Now the children of Israel set up from the wells of Benai, Yakon to Moserah. Aharon died there and he was buried there. And Eleazar, his son, became priest in his place. From there they set out to Gudguda. Gud and from Gudguda, to Yasbatha, a land of rivers of water. At that time, Yahuwah separated the tribe of Lewi to bear the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah, to stand before Yahuwah, to serve him, and to bless in his name to this day. Therefore, Lewi has no portion nor inheritance with his brothers. Yahuwah is his inheritance. Yahuwah your Elohim has promised him. And I stayed in the mountain for forty days and forty nights. And Yahuwah heard me at that time also. And Yahuwah chose not to destroy you. And Yahuwah said to me, Arise, go before the people to set out, and let them go and, and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. And now, Yisrael, what is Yahuwah your Elohim asking of you? But to fear Yahuwah your Elohim, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahuwah your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being, to guard the commands of Yahuwah and his laws, which I command you today for your good. See, the heavens and the heaven of the heavens belong to Yahuwah your Elohim, also the earth with all that is in it. Yahuwah delighted only in your fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, you above all peoples, as it is today. You shall circumcise the foreskin of your heart and harden your neck no more. <laughs> Cut away those parts of your heart that keep you away from a close walk with Yahuwah. Put away those things that draw you away from Yahuwah. It is sometimes easier said than done. Can I get our main? But we have to do our part. Torah has always been about the heart. We can see that all throughout the scriptures. In the New and Old Testament. Proverbs 4.23 Watch over your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the sources of life. Bereshit 26, or Genesis 26, 1 through 5. Talking about Abraham. And there was a scarcity of food in the land, besides the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abraham. And Yitzhak went to Abimelech, sovereign of the Philistines, in Gerar. And Yahuwah appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Mishraim. Live in the land which I command you. Sojourn in this land, and I shall be with you and bless you, for I give you all these lands to you and your seed. And I shall establish the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. And I shall increase your seed like the stars of the heavens, and I shall give all these lands to your seed. And in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, and my Torah. Even way before Exodus 20, when Yahuwah gave Moshe the ten words, we can see servants of Yahuwah, like Abraham, keeping or following, obeying the Torah. 
If you have a true, genuine love for Yahuwah, you will keep his Torah. Actions speak louder than words. I've heard that so many times in our life. We can make our mouths say anything, but what is truly in our hearts will manifest in our actions in what we do. Matthew 7, 16 through 20. By the fruits you shall know them, are grapes gathered from thorn bushes, or figs from thistles? So every good tree yields good fruit, but a rotten tree yields wicked fruit. A good tree is unable to yield wicked fruit, and a rotten tree to yield good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then by the fruits you shall know them. So question to ask yourself, what type of fruit are you producing? Question you might need, need to do a little introspection with. Psalms 19, 7 through 14. Verse 7. The Torah of Yahuwah is perfect, bringing back the beam. The witness of Yahuwah is trustworthy, making wise the simple. The orders of Yahuwah are straight, rejoicing the heart. The command of Yahuwah is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of Yahuwah is clean, standing forever. The right rulings of Yahuwah are clean. They are righteous altogether. More desirable than gold, than much fine gold, and sweeter than honey and the honeycomb. Also, your servant is warned by them. In guarding them, there is great reward. Who discerns mistakes? Declare me innocent from those that are secret. Also, keep your servant back from presumptuous ones. Do not let them rule over me. Then shall I be perfect and innocent of great transgression? Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing before you, O Yahuwah, my rock and my redeemer. When you keep Torah, your heart is in the right place. Matthew twelve thirty four, Brood of adders, how are you able to speak what is good, being wicked? For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. That's the scriptures. I'm going to read the same verse in the King James Version. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Whatever is in our hearts will manifest in our lives through our words and actions to show if we truly serve you or not. Jeremiah 17 verses 1 through 10. The sin of Yehuda is written with a pen of iron, <coughs> engraved with the point of a diamond, on the tablet of their heart, and on the horns of your altars. While their children remember their altars and their asherim by spreading trees on the high hills, my mountain is my mountain in the field. I give as plunder for your wealth, all your treasures, your high places of sin throughout all your borders. And you, even of yourself, shall let go of your inheritance which I gave you. And I shall make you serve your enemies in a land which you have not known. For you have kindled a fire in my displeasure which burns forever. It's not good. Thus Yahuwah, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart turns away from Yahuwah. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert, and not see when good comes, and shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, a salt land that is not inhabited. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahuwah, and whose trust is Yahuwah. It's a pretty powerful scripture. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its fruits by the river, and does not see when he comes. And his leaf shall be green, and in the ear of drought, he is not anxious, nor does he cease from yielding fruit. The heart is crooked above all, and desperately sick. Who shall know it? I, Yahuwah, search the heart. I try the kidneys, and give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his deeds. I'm going to read verse 9 again. The heart is crooked above all, desperately sick. Who shall know it? I'm going to say something that most folks might not like. But with verse 9 in mind, every human being is capable of doing evil. Nobody is above that. I'm not saying that everyone is evil. Please don't get that twisted. But I am saying that no matter how you were raised, where you were raised, everyone is capable of doing some messed up stuff. Look in history. They're great examples.
Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, great examples of evil men in history. But there were some evil women in history too. One is Irma Grease. This G R E S E. Just want to read a short little article from Top Ten Most Evil Women. Another product of Nazis, quote, another product of Nazis final solution, Irma Grease, or the five letter word female dog of Belsen was a guard at concentration camps Ravensbrück, Auschwitz, and Bergen Belsen. Hopefully I didn't slaughter those too bad. I'm trying to pronounce them. Transferred to Auschwitz in 1943. She, she must have shown particular enthusiasm and dedication to the job. She was promoted to senior supervisor, the second highest ranking female in camp, by the end of the year. In charge of over 30,000 Jewish female prisoners, she reveled in her work. Her work included savaging of prisoners by her trained and half-starved dogs, sexual excesses, arbitrary shootings, sadistic beatings with a plated whip, and selecting prisoners for the gas chamber. She enjoyed both, both physical and emotional torture and habitually wore heavy boots and carried a pistol to facilitate both." End quote. Sounds like a pretty nice lady, huh? Not. Now, I'm not saying anybody watching this video has done or even thought of doing messed up stuff like Irma did. But just because Yahuwah has blessed us with so much knowledge and given us a great understanding of his Torah does not mean that we are above doing evil things. Look at David. He was referred to as a man after Yahuwah's own heart, but yet he committed adultery and had a man murdered. We can see how David had a repentant heart in the Psalms, especially Psalms 51. Let me be clear to everyone who hears this video. I'm not saying you're evil. I'm not saying you're capable. I am saying you're capable of doing evil acts because you live in a fleshly body. The constant battle between the spirit and the flesh is the battle between good and evil. That's what Paul's talking about, and I believe in Romans chapter 8. We talk about the battle between the flesh and the spirit. It is common sense to note, even if you have been reading scripture just for a short period of time, that pride doesn't please Yahuwah. Pride can do a number of things. It can prevent us from asking for help when we need it, when we really need it sometimes. It can pre help prevent us from repenting of sins, therefore keeping us from a close walk with Yahuwah. Can anybody out there in YouTube land relate? Second Chronicles 26, 1 through 16. And all the people of Yehuda took Uziyahu, who was 16 years old, and set him up to reign instead of his father, Amatsyahu. So they have a 16-year-old ruling over them. Let's see how this turns out. He built Ethloth and restored it to Yahuda. After the sovereign slept with his fathers. Uziyahu was 16 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem, And his mother's name was Yecholigah of Jerusalem, And he did what was right in the eyes of Yahuwah according to all that his father Amatsu did. So things started out good. Let's keep reading to see if they that's if it stayed that way. And he sought Elohim in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of Elohim. And while he sought Yahuwah, Elohim made him prosper. And he went out and fought against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Goth and the wall of Yavne and the wall of Ashdod and built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines and Elohim helped him against the Philistines and against the Arabians who lived in Gur Baal and the Meunites 
And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uziahu, and his name spread as far as the entrance of Mitzrayim. For he strengthened himself greatly. And Uziahu built towers in Yerushalayim. So he's doing all kind of great stuff. So let's see if he stayed humble in all his greatness. At the corner gate, and at the valley gate, and at the corner Budris, and strengthened them. And he built towers in the wilderness, and dug many wells, for he had much livestock, both in the low country and in the plain, farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in the Carmel, for he loved the soil. Nuziyahu had an army of fighting men who went out to battle by divisions. According to the number on their roll, as prepared by Yiel, the scribe and Masiyahu, the officer. In the hand of Hananyahu, one of the sovereign's commanders. The total number of the cl clan chiefs of the mighty brave ones was 2,600. And under the hand was an army of 307,500 that fought with mighty power to help the sovereign against the enemy. Nuziyahu pre prepared for them for the entire army shields and spears and helmets and body armor and bows and sling stones. And he made machines in Yerushalayim devised by skilled men to be on the towers in the corners to shoot arrows and large stones. And his name spread far and wide. For he was marvelously helped till he became strong. But when he became strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he trespassed against Yahuwah his Elohim by entering the Hekal of Yahuwah to burn incense on the altar of incense. Why in the world would the sovereign of Jerusalem go into the Hekel of Yahuwah, the place where only priests were allowed? Five letter word, pride. The answer is in verse 16. His heart was lifted up and it led to his destruction. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of Yahuwah is to hate evil. I have hated pride and arrogance and the evil way and the perverse mouth Proverbs 11, 2. Pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. Got them in order, so Proverbs 16, 18. Before destruction comes pride, and before a fall, a haughty spirit. Proverbs 21, 24. Proud, haughty, scoffers his name. He acts with arrogant pride. Proverbs 29, 23. The pride of man brings him low, but the humble in spirit obtains esteem. Now let's go to Psalms. Psalms 31, 23, and 24. Love Yahuwah, all you his kind ones, for Yahuwah guards the trustworthy ones, and exceedingly repays the doer of pride. Be strong and let him strengthen your heart, all you who are waiting for Yahuwah. Let go of your pride and give it to Yahuwah. He will strengthen your heart. Yahuwah can help you change if you just let him. The person you are today doesn't have to be the person one, two, five, ten years from now. Not saying that everyone watching this video are terrible people. What I'm saying is that Yahuwah can help you be an even better person than you are right now. In our life in general, and especially with our walk with Yahuwah, we should constantly put forth effort to improve ourselves as human beings. As humans, we spend a lot of time on what we are already good at. We don't spend enough time on areas of our life that need improvement. Whatever your shortcomings or character flaws are, take time to work on them. To better your relationships with your fellow man, most importantly with the creator of heaven and earth. Another issue of the heart that needs to be looked at is scoffing at reproof. For some, reproof is a touchy subject. Why? If we are in sin, we need to be reproved. We need sound, keyword sound, correction from brethren to point us back to the Torah, to the straight and narrow path. Now there is a correct and incorrect way to do this. One sad fact about our politically correct society is we are so afraid of hurting people's feelings. We walk everywhere on eggshells. 
There is a time and place appropriate for reproof. It is necessary from time to time, but it has to be in love. You can't be hateful. I have some brothers that I love very dearly, and they love me very dearly as well. And in the time of my life when I needed some serious, genuine reproof, they gave it to me. They were they were not concerned, they were not so concerned with my feelings, hurting my feelings. They were more concerned about me, my life, my walk with the Father, and my salvation. And I appreciate them reproving me when I needed it the most. This is very rare in our PC society. If you don't discipline your children when they are young, what will happen? They will grow up spoiled and disrespectful. And we have enough of that already. We don't need any more. Some folks are quick to quote Yahushua when, when he said, Judge not lest you be judged. Of course, he'll say it like, Judge not lest you be judged. Snapping the fingers and wagging the neck. That was quoted from Matthew 7 verse 1. But, they forget the fact that the same Yahushua said, Judge with righteous judgment in John 7 24. So that verse, he gives you permission as long as it is in the parameters of the Torah to judge. You can't judge with your opinions or whatever. It has to be in the parameters of the Torah. I wonder if these same brothers and sisters would say to Yahushua, Judge not lest you be judged if he were here today. Would they have the gall to say that to his face? I think not. He regularly dished out a plate full of reproof to the self-righteous who? Pharisees. When they were transgressing the Torah of Yahuwah with their traditions of men. Yahushua had no problem reproofing folks. We shouldn't be afraid to either. But we have to do it in the right manner. We can't be self-righteous or hateful. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, do not despise the discipline of Yahuwah and do not loathe his reproof. For whom Yahuwah loves, he reproves. As a father of the son whom he delights in. Revelations 3.19 As many as I love. See how that's put there first? Love. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. Correctly reproving brothers and sisters is showing them love, not judging them. Ephesians 5.11 See what Paul said. The next two verses. And have no fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scriptures breathed by Elohim are profitable for teaching, for reproof, for setting straight, same as reproof, for instruction in righteousness. James 5 verse 20 Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the straying of his way shall save a life from death. And cover a great number of sins. Now if we find our brother and sister in sin. But we are too scared. We might hurt their feelings if we reprove them. How would this verse be fulfilled? That is called loving people to death. David did that with his two heathen sons. For everyone that's not from the south. Heathen is southern ease for heathen. David should have reproved his sons, but he did not. And what was the result? David loved his two rebellious sons to death. I have a certain view when it comes to reproof. Everybody doesn't look at it, look at it the way I do. I want to be pleasing to Yahuwah. I know I'm not perfect. I come to that realization a long time ago. So from time to time, I need to be reproved. Just like anybody else. If someone sees me in sin, I hope they would have the backbone to approach me and bring my sin to my attention so I can repent and have a closer walk with Yahuwah. 
in the past when I've been reproved, I take it one of two ways. One, I receive what, what is said and make the correct changes to better my life. No harm, no foul. Two, when pride gets in the way, I am not as receptive. Those times when I get reproved, I think to myself, how dare they talk to me that way? But once I get over my pride and stinking thinking, I think about what was said and I realize they were right. I humble my pride and make the correct changes. So it's the same result, it's just a different path. And the number one is usually a lot easier. So I'm just being, I guess I'm just being stubborn. Option two or option B. Amazing how much easier life is when we aren't prideful. I mean, so let's see what Yahuwah thinks of those who scoff at reproof. The scriptures has a lot to say about that, especially Proverbs. But first, one, first verse we're going to read is Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man who shall not walk in the counsel of the wrong, and shall not stand in the path of sinners, and shall not sit in the seat of scoffers. Proverbs 3, 34. He certainly scoffs to scoffers, but gives favor to the humble. Proverbs 9, 8, and 9. Do not reprove, do not reprove a scoffer, lest he hate you. Reprove a wise one, he will love you. Give instruction to a wise one, and he is wiser still. Teach a righteous one, and he increases in learning. Check out this next one. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge. But he who hates reproof is stupid. There's not much I can say about that one. It speaks for itself. Next chapter, verse 1. Proverbs 13, 1. A wise son accepts his father's discipline, but a scoffer shall not listen to rebuke. Proverbs 15, 10, 11, and 12. Discipline is grievous to him who forsakes the way. He who hates reproof dies. The grave and destruction are before Yahuwah. How much more are the hearts of the sons of men? A scoffer does not love his reprover, nor does he go to the wise. Proverbs 15, 31, 32. An ear that hears the reproof of life does dwell among the wise. He who ignores discipline hates himself. But he who listens to reproof gets understanding. Proverbs 19.29 Judgments are in store for scoffers. Uh-oh. And beatings for the backs of fools. I don't want to be in either one of them groups. Proverbs 21.24 Proud, haughty, scoffer is his name. He acts with arrogant pride. Wow. That's a pretty stout verse. Proverbs 22.10 Cast out the scoffer and strife goes out, and contention and shame cease. Proverbs 24, 9. The purpose of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to men. We looked at pride, scoffing at reproof. What else should we look at? How about spirit of rebellion? You can make a whole 10 part maybe 20 part series about ancient Yisrael and them having a spirit of rebellion. I thought about doing a video just on the spirit of rebellion. I was going to call it, Don't Tell Me What To Do. That is, that is exactly the attitude a person has with the spirit of rebellion. Keep Shabbat. Don't tell me what to do. Wear tassels at the four corners of your garment. Don't tell me what to do. Eat only clean meats. Don't tell me what to do. Don't call Yahuwah by those pagan names. Don't tell me what to do. Time and time again in scripture, Yisrael had a spirit of rebellion. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 44, 1 through, I'm going to read a chunk, 23. The word that came to Yerma Yahu concerning all the Yahudim who were dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim, who were dwelling at Migdal and at Taf Panes and at Noph, and in the land of Pathros, saying, 
Thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, You yourselves have seen all the evil that I have brought on Jerusalem and on all the cities of Yehuda. And see, this day they are a ruin, and no one dwells in them. Because of their evil, which they have done to provoke me, by going to burn incense by serving other mighty ones whom they did not know, they nor their nor your fathers. And I sent to you all my servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Please do not do this abominable matter that I hate. Here's a great example of reproof. We need reproof in our lives. We are no better than ancient Israel. Amen. You can say amen to your computer since you, since you can't see each other. Verse 5. But they did not listen or incline their ear to turn from their evil, not to burn incense to other mighty ones. So my wrath and my displeasure were poured out and burned in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they became a ruin and a wasteland as it is this day. And now, thus said Yahuwah, the Elohim of hosts, Elohim of Yisrael, why are you doing this evil against your lives to cut off from you man and woman? child and infant from the midst of Yehuda, leaving none to remain. By provoking me with the works of your hands, by burning incense to other mighty ones in the land of Mitzrayim, where you have gone to dwell, to cut yourselves off and be a curse and a reproach among all the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the evils of your fathers and the evils of the sovereigns of Yehuda and the evil of your wives and your own evils? And the evil of your wives, which they have done in the land of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, to this day they have been humbled, nor have they feared, nor have they walked in my Torah and my laws that I set before you and your fathers. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, see, I am setting my face against you for evil and for cutting off all Yehuda. And I shall take the remnant of Yehuda, who have set their faces to go into the land of Mitzrayim, to sojourn there. And they shall all be consumed in the land of Mitzrayim, fall by the sword, consumed by scarcity of food. From the least to the greatest they shall die, by the sword and by scarcity of food. And they shall be an oath and an astonishment, and a curse and a reproach. Not very pleased at this moment. And I shall punish those dwelling in the land of Mitzrayim, as I have punished Yerushalayim by the sword, by scarcity of food, and by pestilence. And none of the remnant of Yehuda, who have gone into the land of Mitzrayim to sojourn there, shall escape or survive, lest they return to the land of Yehuda, to which they are longing to return to dwell there. For they shall not return except those who escape. Then all the men who knew their wives had burned incense to their mighty ones, and all the women who stood by a great assembly, and all the people who dwelt in the land of Mitzrayim, in Pathros, answered Yermayahu, saying, We are not going to listen to you in the matter about which you spoke to us in the name of Yahuwah. Don't tell me what to do, but we shall do whatever has gone out of our own mouth to burn incense to the sovereignness of the heavens and pour out drink offerings to her as we have done. We and our fathers and our sovereigns and our heads in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem and we have plenty of food. We were well off and saw no evil. But since we ceased burning incense to the sovereignness of the heavens and pouring out drink offerings to her, we have lacked all and have consumed by the sword by scarcity of food. And when we burned incense to the sovereignness of the heavens and poured out drink offerings, we did make cakes for her to idolize her and pour out drink offerings to her without our husbands. Then Jeremy Yahu spoke to all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people who had given him that answer, saying, As for the incense that you burned in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your sovereigns, and your heads, and the people of the land did not Yahuwah remember them, and it came into his heart. 
That's what we're talking about, the heart. And Yahuwah could no longer bear it because of the evil of your deeds. And because of the abominations which you did. Therefore, your land is a ruin, an object of astonishment, a curse, and without an inhabitant as it is this day. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against Yahuwah and did not obey the voice of Yahuwah or walk in his Torah, in his laws, or in his witnesses. Therefore, this evil did befall you as at this day. A classic example of the children of Israel demonstrating their normal spirit of rebellion. So, what about another classic example of the golden calf? Exodus 32. 1 through 14. And when the people saw that Moshe was long in coming down from the mountain, the people gathered together to Aharon and said to him, Arise, make us mighty ones who go before us. For this Moshe, the man who brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. And Aharon said to them, Take off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. All the people took off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aharon. And he took this from their hand, and he formed it with an engraving tool, and made a molded calf, and they said, This is your mighty one, O Yisrael, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Aharon saw and built an altar before it. And Aharon called out and said, Tomorrow is a festival to Yahuwah. So they made this mighty one, made an altar for it, and called it Yahuwah. No, no, no. We don't do this. And they rose early on the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Go, get down, for your people whom you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim has corrupted themselves. <clears throat> they have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a golden calf, and they bowed themselves to it and slaughtered to it and said, This is your mighty one, O Yisrael, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I have seen this people, and see, it is a stiff-necked people. And now, let me alone, that my wrath might burn against them, and I consume them, and I make of you a great nation. But Moshe pleaded with Yahuwah his Elohim and said, Yahuwah, why does your wrath burn against your people, whom you have brought out of the land of Mitzrayim, with greater power and with a strong hand? Why should the Mitzrites speak and say, For evil has brought them out of, to kill them in the mountains, and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from the heat of your wrath, and relent from this evil to your people. Remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yisrael your servants, to whom you swore by yourself and said to them, I increase your seed like the stars of the heavens. In all this land that I have spoken of, I give to your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahuwah relented from the evil which he, he said he would do to his people. The ancient Israelites couldn't even wait until Moshe got down from the mountain before crying to Aaron about making them a mighty one to serve. They brought peace offerings and burnt offerings to the golden calf. Abominable practices according to the Torah. Are we any different in 2014? No, we don't have any golden calves in our living rooms, but we do have idols in our houses whether we admit it or not. We have idols in our pockets. We walk around with everywhere. Can you say TV, phones, iPads, tablets, computers, etc., etc., etc.? Psalms 107, 1 through 19. Give thanks to Yahuwah, for he is good, for his kindness is everlasting. Let the redeemed of Yahuwah say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the adversary and gathered out the lands from east and from the west, from the north, from the south, that wandered in a wilderness, in a desert way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their being is in them grew faint. Then they cried out to Yahuwah in their distress. He delivered them out of their troubles, 
and he guided them by the right way to go to a city to settle. Let them give thanks to Yahuwah for his kindness and his wonders to the children of men. For he has satisfied a longing being and has filled the hungry being with goodness. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of El and despised the counsel of the Most High. And he humbled their heart by toil. They stumbled and there was no help, no one to help. And they cried out to Yahuwah in their distress. And he saved them out of their troubles. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and he broke their chains in pieces. Let them give thanks to Yahuwah for his kindness and his wonders to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of bronze, and he cut the bars of iron in two. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their crookednesses, were afflicted. Their being loathed all food, and they drew near to the gates of death, and cried out to Yahuwah in their distress. He saved them out of their troubles. Even if we rebel against Yahuwah, if we turn back to him and repent, he will save us from our troubles and our sin. Doesn't mean we have a license to sin. We have to be repentant when we do sin. We are a few months out from Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. We all look forward to it every year. Just like a kid looks forward to going to a candy store. I believe Hashatan uses that as ammo against us. We look so forward to Sukkot, we overlook Yom Kippurim, or the Day of Atonements. We should not do that. Atonement is way more important than Sukkot. Amen. The last scripture is Luke 8, 1 through 15. And it came to be afterward that he went through every city and village, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the reign of Elohim, and the twelve were with him. And certain women who were healed of wicked spirits and sicknesses, Miriam, called, Magda, called from Magdala, out of whom he had come seven demons. And Yochanan, the wife of Cusa, manager of Herodias, and Shoshana, and many others who provided for him their resources. And when a large crowd had gathered, and those who were coming to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some indeed fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the birds of the heaven devoured it. And other fell on rock, and when it grew up, it withered because it had no moisture. And other fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And other fell on good soil and grew up and yielded a crop a hundredfold. Having said this, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And his taught ones were asking him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the reign of Elohim, but to the rest in parables that, seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not understand. And this is the parable. The seed is the word of Elohim. And those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, lest having believed they should be saved. And those by the wayside, sorry, and those on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And those have no root, who believe for a while, and in time of trial, fall away. And that which fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to perfection. And that on the good soil are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, retain it, and bear fruit with endurance. And that on the good soil are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, retain it and bear fruit with endurance. Yahuwah, please help us all to be fertile soil.
Please plant your word in our hearts and let us all blossom into beautiful vessels for your service. Today we have looked at a number of different issues of the heart. Next week I will spend time on an entire video on one issue of the heart that can make or break a believer on forgiveness. Same time, same channel. God bless.